Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Naima B. Robert and I've been Muslim for 18 years, alhamdulillah. Um, well, I grew up in Zimbabwe and I grew up in a non-religious household. Um, I grew up really not believing in God um, until I got to my late teens um, and I started to think there must be there must be a higher power, there must be something out there that's looking out for me, that knows me better than I know myself. Um, I was introduced to church, went uh, a couple of times, um, but for me, the fact that they told me to believe without any proof or without being able to convince me uh, meant that I couldn't commit to it, so I didn't go back again. Uh, and it was only when I went to the UK and I was at university um, and in my first year of university, I went to Egypt for uh, a festival. And in Egypt, I, for the first time it seemed, noticed these women wearing hijab. And I was not impressed at all. Uh, as far as I was concerned, they were oppressed, they were repressed. And I raged about it for a good two days before I actually asked somebody, why do you cover? And I think that was what, you know, people would call my, my, my light bulb moment or what Oprah would call my aha moment was when she said to me, because I want to be judged for what I say and what I do, not what I look like. For me, that was just like, whoa, wait a minute. Where did you get that idea from? And I started to think, what is this Islam that makes this woman so strong, so confident, so sure of herself, that she doesn't need to do what millions of women do every day, which is put themselves out there to be assessed, to be accepted, to be admired. And I wanted to find out more. And really, that was my introduction to Islam. I started to ask questions, I started to read. Um, you know, I, I started to mix more with Muslims, and I actually went on a journey of discovery, which I, you know, I, I talk about in my book, From My Sister's Lips. I think everybody faces different challenges when they accept Islam, depending on where they're coming from, depending on you know who they become Muslim around, what kind of community they come into. Uh, I was very fortunate because I became Muslim at a time when at university, it's like it was like everybody was becoming Muslim. Like everybody was either starting to practice or was becoming Muslim. So we had like a whole big group of us who were on this Dean High. I mean, we'd go to the Masajid and we'd go for the Tarawih prayers and we'd you know cook iftar for each other. And it was mashallah, it was really amazing. We were in this sort of new Muslim bubble. Um, I think some of the hardest challenges would be things that you're just used to from Jahiliya. You know, things like maybe for some people's address code, for me it wasn't so much because I actually chose to start covering, uh, start covering my hair and then just, you know, as my Iman grew and my knowledge grew, I just covered more and more. Um, but, you know, certain maybe friends from the past that you were close to and that you realized were not really helping you in your deen anymore. Um, guy friends, definitely, if you had close guy friends, you know, that was a difficult that was a difficult transition and it wasn't just difficult for for me or for the person who's becoming muslim it was difficult for them as well for them to understand that it's not personal it's something that i need to do because of my religion and of course you know the reactions of family when they thought that basically i just gone mad and um, you know i think that idea of you used to be dot 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 you used to be so much fun. You used to be so cool. You used to be so clever. You used to be so ambitious. You used to be, you used to be, you used to be. And then you became Muslim. And it was like for a lot of people, you were all these amazing things. Then you became Muslim and now there's nothing. There's just you, Muslim, you know, you're not with us anymore. You're not fun, you know, you're not contributing. You, you've just opted out basically of life. I think for me that was a that was a big concern for me if I remember the poetry that I used to write when I first became Muslim. This idea of I still want to be myself. You know, I, I I've spent 18 years, 19 years, 20 years being me. I want to be Muslim and be myself and be me still. Um, and that kind of struggle of the nafs, I guess, that jihad of nafs that you have between balancing who you are and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us, that jihad is hard enough. When you add the jihad that you have between yourself and your nafs 
and what Allah wants from us, and then what other people expect from you, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, it can become a real time of turmoil and conflict, and it can be really difficult, subhanAllah. But alhamdulillah, you know, you make your way through. Uh, and I think most of us go through a journey of self-discovery, even within Islam, where you maybe became Muslim, shut out everything from your previous life because you wanted to do the right thing Islamically. And then alhamdulillah, you know, after a while, you, you, you get used to being Muslim in a way and you, you find your feet and you get a better understanding, I think, and you realize that not everything that you were before was haram. Not everything that you were before or loved before was something that you had to abandon. And so you start to reincorporate into your life the things that were important to you, the things that you were good at, but now it's in a halal context, and now it's in an Islamic context. Now it could even be ibadah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it from us. I've met so many people who've been through that journey, you know, of becoming Muslim, abandoning everything and everyone, you know, living like that for many years sometimes. And then alhamdulillah, after a while, you realize that it's not the way I thought it was at the beginning. You know, it, it, there is more space, there is room. I can still be me because being Muslim makes me the best version of me. It doesn't make me into somebody else. It just makes me the better version of the one I was before, the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me to be. My family were an interesting case. Um, my mother, who was a Christian, was happy that I had found God. She was quite pleased about that. Um, my father was an atheist, and he was one of those people who felt that you used to be. You used to be so amazing. You had so much potential. You were going to do great things in the world. And then now you're Muslim. You've given up on everything. You know, you're going to marry some man, and we're never going to see you again. So there was a lot of pressure, I think, on that side to sort of to prove him wrong in a way. Um, alhamdulillah, yani, he's now, mashallah, one of my greatest supporters. But I think with the family, it really was, they felt it was a rejection of, of who we were as a family and who, you know, who they had expected me to be and who I had been. Um, so it was tough. It was tough. I mean, my, my sister, mashallah, she, uh, she was very supportive. But, you know, we had members of the family who considered me a pariah and just thought that I was a write-off, basically. Alhamdulillah, you know, these things take time sometimes and people need to see you finding your feet within this new path. Um, when you get married, you know, when you have, start having children, it becomes normalized in a way. And also you as well, you change. You know, when you were first Muslim, you want to tell everybody about this amazing deen and you want to convince everybody this is the truth. You should all be on it. You should all be Muslim. And if you don't, if you're not Muslim, you're going to hellfire. You know, and so a lot of reverts find themselves in a situation where they alienate a lot of their family members because they're like going in hard and going in hard. Um, and it takes a while for you to realize that that's probably not the best approach and you need to have a lot more hikmah, a lot more wisdom when you're dealing with people. And remember the love, you know, remember what it means to be family. Remember what it means to have love for your family members and have that, that, that relationship with, with people in your family without compromising your, your religious principles. So, um, you know, as far as family is concerned, some, for some people it is their biggest test. Um, as I said, I was in a bubble. I was away from home, I was away from everybody. I was in university. So when I first became Muslim, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't affected so much. Stuff that I would hear second hand. But, you know, as, as the years go by, it can be very, very difficult. And, and uh, you know, it is something that you struggle with. But you just make dua and you continue to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you guided and that He guides and opens the hearts of the people around you and that you, through your actions, through your attitude, through your behavior, can actually be effective da'wah to these people uh, around you and these people that you grew up with. And if, at the very least, change their perceptions of what it means to be Muslim, and inshallah, even open and soften their hearts to the message of Islam. The writing came by surprise. I always enjoyed writing when I was younger, when I was a teenager, but I never thought of it as a career or something that I would do, you know, as an adult. Um, and it was born around the time that my son was maybe six months, eight months old, my eldest, um, and I would take him to the library. And at the library, mashallah, I love books, and we'd go to the library and we would take so, so much time in the children's library, just enjoying the books and, you know, choosing which ones we we're going to take home. And really the biggest thing for me was that there were no books about Muslims. 
there were no books about Islam. And I really wanted my son to grow up with a very strong sense of himself and a, a sense of pride in who he is as a Muslim. I wanted him to see himself reflected in the books that we were reading and bringing home. And really that's how the children's writing was born. I just started writing sort of little rhymes based on some of the things that I liked from the library, based on the, some of the ideas that I had seen. I just started writing little rhymes for children. And alhamdulillah, uh, my first book, The Swirling Hijab, was a result of one of those first sessions. Um, and then I just started working as a children's writer and my niche was multicultural children's literature because there was at the time a huge void in the market for books about Muslims. Alhamdulillah now, there's a lot more, but when I first started, this was now 2000, 2001, there was nothing. So The Swirling Hijab was actually revolutionary in its own way because it was a book, very much a children's book. It's in rhyming texts and it's about a girl playing with her mother's hijab. And at the end, it says, you know, that covering her mum as a part of her faith is what the hijab does best. Now, that was before all the hijab fitna. That was before the niqab bans. This was before Europe went crazy. And the publisher was brave enough to just say, this is part of Muslims' life. This is part of Islam. And we want to help you celebrate that. And so they did. And then after that, we wrote about many different things. We wrote about Islamic art, about how Muslims welcome you know, new babies. Uh, I wrote a lot of books that looked at different cultures and how different cultures live, etc. Um, so that was the children's writing. From my sister's lips came literally by Allah's planning, because I wasn't intending to write a book. I ended up meeting my agent because she wanted me to write a children's book for her. And in the end, she came to my home and, uh, you know, I cooked for her because she wanted to go out to eat. And I said to her, well, uh, I don't mind going out with you, but I cover fully. So not everywhere will be appropriate. And she was just, it just blew her mind. Um, and so she just couldn't get her head around it. So she was like, excuse me, I just need to know what do you mean you cover fully? So I explained it to her and I said to her, you know, I have always wanted to write a book about what it means for me to be a Muslim woman and to live in the UK and, and how I became Muslim. Because every time I see a book that's written about Muslim women, it's a sob story, you know, it's a tragedy, it's some big drama. And that's not our, that's not how we live, you know, that our lives aren't like that. So she was really excited by the idea. And she said, look, I can get you a book deal. If you can write this book, I can get you a book deal. And alhamdulillah, she did. And so that was the result. Uh, the result of that was um, from my sister's lips. Alhamdulillah, um, amazing help from the sisters that were around me at the time. Just we did interviews, we talked about everything, and uh, we had a great time doing that. And then I went uh, back home to my father's house in Zimbabwe to actually write up all the interviews and write the book. And the book took about six weeks. It was just inspired. I just sat down at the computer. The words would just come, alhamdulillah. And my father was one of my main proofreaders. So he would actually read the manuscript and give me ideas on how to improve this bit. Although I have to mention this. I think he was the one who made sure that I mentioned polygamy, I think. Uh, and he was the one who made me put the sisterhood at the end of the book because he felt that that was really the strongest message of my life and of the book was Islamic sisterhood and what that sisterhood means and what it and what it can offer to the world. So that was from my sister's lips. And then after that, obviously, I wrote uh, many different novels for teenagers and all of them just wanting to share Muslim life with Muslims and with non-Muslims. Uh, and for young people to see themselves reflected in the books that they read and also to be able to tackle some of the issues that our young people face that we as adults have a hard time dealing with, a hard time facing up to things that we don't talk about in general. Um, so, you know, uh, From Somalia with Love, Boy versus Girl, uh, Black Sheep, uh, She Wore Red Trainers, all of them deal with the reality of being a young Muslim in, in, in the West today and around the world, really. Um, so that's, that's really how, that's how my writing trajectory has gone. Uh, I hope, inshallah, to be able to write more books in the, in the style of From My Sister's Lips. I have a lot of books inside me. I still have to write about Hajj. Inshallah, I would really like to write a book about my idda as well and, uh, and include my poetry. So that's a new thing for me. Uh, this is the poetry and um, it's, it's a journey that I'm really enjoying, alhamdulillah. And it seems to be touching people and it seems to be making a difference in some people's lives. And really, that's all we can ask for, alhamdulillah. I knew from my sister's lips was speaking truth. I knew that. Um, I wrote it from a place of 
of love, really. Um, you know, I wanted to set the record straight. I wanted people to be surprised and inspired and learn from this book. Um, and, mashallah, just the love that I got from sisters who actually were involved in the book how easy it was for the book to come out. Uh, and then the response that we got afterwards, I've had people saying they started to wear hijab because of the book, or that it's made them proud to be a Muslim. And I know even some people who became Muslim after reading that book. So subhanAllah, the barakah, um, you know, was, I think, inshallah, was a result of my intentions were really set the record straight, put this out there as a good deed, inshallah. Uh, and Allah will bring the success. So, um, you know, alhamdulillah, I pray that Allah accepts it from me and from all the sisters who were involved and also from, you know, my husband, Allah because he was a huge part of that book uh, and, and facilitating it and supporting it and making it happen. And uh, subhanAllah, he used to actually say that he's hoping that his, one of his best deeds will be helping me to write that book um, because it was, mashallah, such a, a, a book of da'wah. It was a book of da'wah. Uh, and Dr. Saleh Saleh also was involved and may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, and, and, and reward him, you know, for his work on it. Um, it, was, it was a labor of love. I think that's the best way to put it. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Um, what can I say? Um, it's been a journey of... Uh, self-discovery, um, there have been hardships, there have been trials, there have been successes and triumphs, and um, at the end of the day, I think the best thing about it is that I'm still standing, alhamdulillah, um, you know, when he passed, Allah uh, Hamul, I just was thrown into a whole new world, a whole new role. Um, you know, I've, I've been sort of a stay-at-home mom, I've been a work-from-home mom, I've been a homeschooling mom, and for the first time, I'm mom and dad, I'm a working mom, I'm a single mom, um, I run a company, I run two companies, and I run my husband's company as well as sisters, um, and uh, yeah, it's a, new, it's a new life, and um, this is what Allah has decreed for me. And because I'm still standing, I know that Allah has put khair in it for me. So even though it's nothing like I knew and nothing like I expected, I have full yaqeen that there is khair in it for me and that I can handle it. And I think that makes a huge difference. Allah is my wali, he's my wakil, and he will never let me, he will never let me fall. And I believe that with full certainty. And so even when the tests come, even when the trials come, even when it feels overwhelming, I know that he is there and that he's wish willing me to pull through and that he will not let me fall and that he'll catch me. I think one of the things that I would say to, mashallah, every sister that's out there is keep your head up. Keep your head up. This life is not easy. This life is full of trials. Alhamdulillah, we have a good time. A lot of us have a good time at it, but it is a trial. But if you see the trials and the tests as a challenge, you will face it in a different way from if you see it as like a punishment or something that you is being imposed on you that you've got no control over. Everything that happens to us is a challenge. And when we have the mindset that bi'idhnillah we are going to achieve and we are going to win and we are going to actually, we're going to, we're going to step up to the plate and we're going to put our game face on, then you approach it with positivity and confidence and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you and that he will guide you if you want guidance. And so make intention is the first thing. Make intention and then take the first step. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always help you if you're making your way towards him the Hadith Qudsi tells us, if you come towards him, a hand span, he comes towards you at arm's length. Meaning, he will not leave you to make the whole journey on your own without helping you. He will help you. Make the intention, take the first step, surround yourself with good company. That's the advice that I have for my sisters out there, because in those ways, at least, whatever happens, if you don't get on Dean before you die, at least you die trying. 
And I think that is where we all want to be, that we, Allah takes us when we're striving, and He takes us when we're trying, and He takes us when our hearts are already attached to Him, when our intention is already to rejoin Him. And I think that's the advice that I would give to my sisters.